Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We have an unboxing to do for you today of something that's really interesting. You know, it's uh, not often that we see one of these. <laughs> it's a watch, yeah. We see watches all the time. I know, I know. But this is a GPS tracking watch and it's stake to claim is um, tracking as opposed to fitness uh, or, or Android with all the apps. This one is gonna be something, they, they kind of bill it for the elderly or for children, right? That you can wear, you put in a SIM card in here, it can communicate your location, uh, you can send an SOS warning, all of that. It's a really thick watch. It's not a designer's watch by any means. However, it, in terms of functionality, could be a lifesaver. Let's see what we've got here. It comes to us from Banggood, and they're a, a wonderful source for creative new technology. They brought us the first ECG, PPG, heart rate monitoring, e e e all that stuff tight in bands and, and watches. And now we've got this RF V36 tracker GPS unit. And in term, oh, uh, by the way, check the show notes for the link to uh, pick this one up and uh, buying coupons, discount coupons if we have them for you. In terms of what it is, it's basically um, a watch with five different modes of real-time tracking. You can have historical route checking, uh, fencing, you know about geofencing where you can put a fence around a geographical area on the map and if the watch goes in it or out of it, you can be notified. Uh, it has voice chat and two-way audio calls, so you could check real quick if something comes up, if your loved one is okay. And of course, the SOS button you saw on the side and so forth. has a pill reminder, alarm clock. It's really uh, kind of meant for the elderly, I believe. Um, you can have remote rebooting of the device even as well. Multiple ways of tracking, GPS and all of these others. Uh, sport sedentary reminder, a 500 milliamp hour battery, and these are the bands that it's operating on. Now, a little bit more about it since it was there. I printed it out for you guys to take a look at. Um, it has familiarity number dialing, uh, two-way telephone and voice listening. Yeah, it's, it's basically a spy watch that's meant for uh, working with the elderly and children. So you wanna make sure when you set this up, you're doing it legally and properly and that it's for the right purposes. And if you get it all set up, you should be able to use this as a very efficient uh, method of keeping track of your loved ones. What else is in the box? Let's check it out. Got a little cardboard insert. A screwdriver, no doubt, for removing the screw to get your SIM card in it. An extra screw in case you strip that one. <laughs> There's your uh, charger, which is your standard uh, four-pin magnetic coupled charger that'll just slap on the back. So you can buy extras of these. Most watches are using that now. And then a user's manual in Chinese and English. Let's look at the English one. This is probably one of those watches where the manual is going to come in really handy. So let's take a look at it carefully. You get yourself a, a nano SIM card and you install it in the back. Mm -hmm. Lock it in place and turn the power on. So we have status and time and home button. There's a home button on the front. And then you install the app. And magic is going to happen with the app, no doubt. You're going to uh, scan that particular QR code. And then you log into the app with the 10-digit ID number and the default password, 123456. Huh. All right. When you do, then you're set up, I suppose. You set the SOS number. And how you do the calls, checking for location. Now look at this, heartbeat and blood pressure inspection. You can provide a reference value of the heartbeat and blood pressure remotely with this watch. 
Wow. Okay. Now we're seeing a new trick from an old pony, right? It has no signal after a SIM card installation. Problems, I guess, you could work on. It says devices offline. So forth. Relatively sophisticated piece of telecommunications technology that uh, really relies on having a SIM card. I don't even see any mention of Wi-Fi or anything in here. Oh, there it is. Okay, we do have Wi-Fi. Good. And GSM. So if it's a setup and it's on the zone in Wi-Fi at home, which where most elderly people may be, um, perhaps you don't even need to have the SIM card, but you could have all the technology in it uh, running on Wi-Fi. It might fit a need for a particular family. Uh, might be yours. Who knows? Let's charge it up and take a look. To turn it on, we press and hold the side button. And we get Santa Claus with hello on the screen as it boots up. And I got to tell you, I uh, had high expectations for this watch as a possibility, but due to some critical limitations, I haven't been able to get it to work. But I'll show you what it's supposed to do, and maybe in your country, <laughs> you, maybe in your country it'll work. It doesn't here. <clears throat> it needs a SIM card. Without a SIM card, I can't get into connecting with the app and in order to connect with the app, and it appears to be via SIM and not Bluetooth, I can't change the language. It defaults to Chinese. It's icon-driven, as you can see here. I touched it. There's like a telephone book, your telephone, your text messaging, heart rate. I'm guessing now. I'm guessing. Your step count, a music player. Maybe you adjust your volume sedentary reminder, and the overall app for tethering, right? And you're back to contacts. And press the button again, it's off, press it again, you get this analog watch. And then I'm back here. And every now and then you can get back to that digital display, but I'm not quite sure how. That's supposed to be a button there as well. That There we go. Okay, now that's how we did it. Digital time, weather display is in there, date, and then a bunch of Chinese characters, and your battery charge. Now, that's about all it does for the person who's wearing it, and I did show it to you on. It would look like this. Now, imagine that this is in the hands or on the arms of a very young or very old who really are not very technologically savvy. That's fine, because this is supposed to be more or less a remote monitor that uh, a user, a different user actually, would maintain data connection with uh, via the app. So let's talk a moment about the app, and then we'll come back here. Man, this was hard to get. You saw the little app icon in there. Uh, you can scan that one, on. Oh, I showed you the QR code already that was in the... Uh, Turn that down just a bit in the manual. Either of those, if you scan them uh, and you try to load them up on your phone or your computer or whatever to download the app, you can't get there. It's something's wrong. It just loops within the website and you never get a final page. So trick is you have to go to the web address that's in that whole... Um, and I'm not even going to show it on the screen here for you. You're going to, you got to own this thing to do this. You go into that uh, location and you take off all of the suffix stuff. So it's just the .com type thing. Go into there, roam around, try to find where you can get into the app, set the app language for English, if that's your language, and download the app called Any Tracking. This is not in the Google Play Store. I'm not sure it would ever get approved by Google. You're at your own risk of compromising all your information in connecting this whole thing up. Just be forewarned. Goosey territory. I'm not comfortable. I did set up an, a, an account to get into it. And uh, that's what's covered up here because your opening screen looks like this. Your um, user number. And each one of these is uniquely identified. Not just by the IMEI for the phone, but by its own uh, specialized number, which is what's there, your password, and you can choose which mapping system you want it to use and have it remember all of that stuff. Once you log in, you're taken to this page, which has your user ID up there as well. This is the master two pages, this page and this page. 
of icon driven in this case it's in english because the app is supported in different languages um, the interface to speak with interrogate listen to and everything you're going to do with this watch so let's walk through these real time takes you actually into um, the google calendar or the google map this can switch you to um, uh, the satellite imagery or this is the map imagery and it's so close you could pick your nose and watch it happen. That's probably me right there. There's a big circle here, which is your uh, error area. And that's basically where I am. It's a tiny little building out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, here's the next adjoining houses and such. So you zoomed way, way in when it gives you this, um, this image. And it updates it every 10 seconds. And that would be all fine and dandy if I were actually linked to the watch, but I'm not. So what it's doing is finding the location of my phone, is the best I can tell. Because I don't have this uh, with a SIM card. And there's no way that I can see that you can put it on Wi-Fi. I have a protected Wi-Fi environment. There's no Wi-Fi symbol up here. Uh, so not sure. But anyway... If you are connected with a SIM card cell phone connection, this should be giving you the location of the watch. What you're seeing here is the location of the phone. The next icon is Voice Talk. When I go in here, I get to this page. And this is where you would actually have a voice conversation with the person on the watch. So if you got some data that was important and you needed to check on the health of that person, you can press and hold to talk and say something. I am pressing and holding. Lose your finger to cancel the recording. All righty, I'm losing it. Wait a minute, it's not counting down. There we go, now it's recording. Okay, and I let go, and that sent that signal to the watch and the other person could hear it like a walkie-talkie. If you press and hold, you can hear. <clears throat> it's supposed to play it. Well, let's try one of these. This is another test, testing one, two, three. There, that's when I did a test earlier. It's funky, folks, it's funky. It doesn't seem to work I all the time. I am pressing and holding. Lose your finger to cancel the recording. All righty, I'm losing it. Wait a minute, it's not counting down. There we go, now it's recording. So you would have the two-way conversation of you and the other person that would be uh, like a chat screen and pressing and holding would let you listen to what the conversation was about and that's the part on voice talk historical route is where you could have um track of everywhere that the watch went that it keeps that information for you then you have geofencing now, geofencing is, we talked about that, where you set up a parameters. This is, again, zoomed in on my location. I can back it out a little bit. I could establish that geofence. So if whoever had the watch on wandered outside of the circle, it would trigger a notification to the app that the person has left the building, so to speak, right? And you could set a geofencing around any area that you want anywhere in the world. That's the geofencing. Come on back to me. There we go. Then Wi-Fi fencing. And it's supposed to have this for Wi-Fi. But again, I can't get Wi-Fi to work. I can't, uh, I can't set up the router information so that if you leave the Wi-Fi zone... Anyway, I don't know how it works. And it doesn't seem to be working unless I have a SIM card. Then you have your overall settings. I'll come back to that. Here's your heart rate data for the person um, day by day that's wearing this. So you can keep information on the heart rate remotely. Here's the step count. You're walking um, calories burned and distance traveled on each specific date for the watch. And then an alarm list which doesn't have any, but you probably could add some alarms to it. Settings. Let's look at all of these. We got a bunch. About the device gives you specific information, including, again, the number of the unique device. Um, you can change your password. 
intervals for uploading data, you know, it, longer battery life for shorter intervals. It's got 500 milliamp hour battery, so it should be good for at least a day, I would presume. Um, but you can change that. Your phone number as the main monitoring phone number. You can set the SOS phone number, uh, your phone book, all these kind of things. Voice monitoring, that's what we were doing, where you can monitor the call. Alarms, pill alarms, find the watch, the time zone. And this, I was hoping, device language and time zone. Um, and I set it for English, but it doesn't push that to the watch to change the device language until you can connect it. And I can't connect it without the working SIM. Remotely boot and remote power off. Again, if you can communicate with it, you can do all of that. So if you can get past the obstacle of there not being a SIM capability, I believe it works only on 2G um, because I've used 3G AT&T in the USA and it's not able to connect. But if you do a 2G SIM, um, and it's fast enough for the small level of data that you're transferring, you might be able to get this thing to work for you. You can set reminders, have frequently asked questions, and log out. And when I went into the FAQ, you can tell that this is still a work in progress out of China. It has not been internationalized because what you get is this. So for those of you who want to flash your Google Translate on the YouTube screen right now, you can, and it's cut off too, and I can't move it or scale it. You can translate some of this, I guess, and uh, see what it's telling you in terms of FAQs. But that's pretty much all we've got. It doesn't do anything more. Um, it really is, as I can understand it, meant for you to be able to monitor the health and location of someone of concern elderly or a uh, youngster, probably, uh, remotely with an app to the watch and track all that stuff uh, as you go. And if you're interested, once again, you can pick it up through Banggood. You can check the show notes down below. I'm pretty sure I do have a coupon discount for you on this one and um, see what it'll do for you. Again, check it out to make sure that the SIM capability will work in your country uh, because it's critical to setting everything up on this device. We will see you again soon. And I'm going to be bringing in Android watches. If I can't get any, I'm just going to grab one and take it apart for you. I'm, I'm itching to touch another Android watch. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Bye.